Good morning, Jacob Street Watershed. We are here on Monday, August 8th. It is about 10 a.m. out on Green Lake Run. Um, Green Lake Run is a small tributary to Jacob's Creek that forms uh, the Green Lake Run Dam or Green Lake Lake, depending on what you call it. Um, we are in the upstream section, um, upstream of the dam. And we're out here with this construction crew today to remove what you see right here. This structure is a low head dam, um, and it actually continues across the entirety of the creek here. You can see another section in the woods there. Um, and this low head dam was built a long time ago, probably as a portion of a mill. Um, but currently there's no mill here. There's no real purpose for it. Um, and so we're out here with this crew today, uh, removing it from our creek, um, which is a big deal. Um, there are several low head dams on Jacobs Creek that um, so some have been removed by J JCWA in the past, um, and this one will mark another one. So the reason why we wanna remove dams on small little creeks like this, um, if we look around, you can see the nice unaltered headwater sections here, nice and rocky. Um, we just had some big rain events, so it's a little murky today, but that will clear up um, after that sediment washes through. Whereas if we look down here, we see a lot of mud. Um, we see not really much rock structure. Um, if you were to look downstream, there's a deep pool below this and actually a waterfall flowing over top of this dam. Um, while it might look kind of neat to have a waterfall, it actually can be pretty damaging um, to the stream ecosystem itself for a couple of different reasons. Um, firstly, I mean, if we look at this drop up here, I'll take a walk over here. Um, if we look at this drop, that is going to be provide or become what we call a fish passage barrier. And what we mean by that is fish in the stream like to move around, right? Um, and as they do that, they're going to go upstream, they're going to go downstream, and sometimes a fish is going to be swimming along this, down, this upstream section and it's going to fall over the waterfall. When that happens, it can't really get back up. Um, and in a, a stream this small, a system this small, that can be life or death for that fish. Um, certain types of fish, like our native brook trout, Savalinus fontanalis, our state fish, they rely on um, these upstream and downstream movements to get their food, to forage, and to spawn in certain locations. So they have very specific spawning requirements. Um, a survey a couple years back found that um, Green Lake Dam, or Green, sorry, excuse me, Green Lake Run did have um, the only known naturally reproducing brook trout population in the Jacobs Creek watershed, um, which is a big deal. We want to make sure that we keep that um, habitat and keep that resource alive um, because, again, it is our state fish. It's an important keystone species. Um, and if we can keep the brook trout populations healthy, chances are we're keeping lots of other fish populations healthy as well. So um, in removing this dam, we're gonna eliminate that fish passage barrier. And here you can see, we're gonna start to dig some of the accumulated debris out of this section. Um, that's the first that we've started to take off the dam itself, pretty exciting. Um, and as we remove this, the stream will be graded down to meet that level there. There won't be as harsh of a drop, and that's going to allow the fish to move up and down the stream um, with relative ease. That's how it's naturally supposed to be, so we're trying to return it back to that natural state. Another function of removing this dam is something that you'll notice as we start to dig into this center section. There's a lot of mud and a lot of silt accumulating here, and a lot of debris as well. Um, while debris accumulations aren't bad, they provide a lot of habitat, it is stopping debris from maybe moving further downstream, um, which would be, you know, provide more beneficial habitat down that way. But a bigger issue is the silt itself. Um, if you look up at these upstream sections again, you can see they're nice and big and rock, like big and rocky. Um, these larger rocks and boulders and stones. This is what this stream is pretty much naturally supposed to be. And if we look right here, you can see 
make some larger grains on the bottom in these faster flowing sections. As we move down, you're gonna see we still have rocks along the sides, but there's not many rocks in the channel itself. And we've transitioned into this very fine silty material at the bottom here. Silt is not in itself bad, um, but in a system where it's not supposed to be, like Green Lake Run here, um, it can actually cause a lot of issues. We mentioned about brook trouts uh, and, and how we're trying to increase habitat for them um, and how they spawn in these systems. In order for a brook trout to spawn, they need to have gravel like this. So this is good for brook trout spawning. This silt down here can actually suffocate their eggs. Their eggs can get very easily buried in the silt. They can't take in any oxygen and it can kill the baby trout before they even have a chance to hatch. So by removing this, uh, this barrier, we're gonna allow that silt to more freely flow downstream with the current. You can see how there's a lot of it suspended right now. With the dam in place, all this water slows down and the silt falls to the bottom. Once the dam is removed, it'll keep flowing downstream and eventually make its way into Green Lake Run Reservoir, where it's okay to have a silty bottom in a lake. So we're altering not only the biology impact, we're also altering the hydrology and the geology, um, restoring it back to sort of a natural state um, by removing this, this blockage here. Okay, um, I'm gonna shut up and uh, we can watch as they start to um, take apart this dam. <laughs> 